organizational behavior. If we bifurcate the term, it's organization and behavior. As Mintzberg says, that there are three types of managerial roles. That is informational, interactional, and decisional. So a manager has to disseminate the information, take the responsibilities and roles of a leader as a spokesperson, has to liaison between internal and external things in an organization, and also take decisions as an entrepreneur at a level of creativity and new or novel ideas. You as an upcoming managers should know that how you will behave or how you will anticipate or assume, see if one is behaving in a particular manner, there may be external reasons also behind it, despite of only considering the internal reasons. And for that, coming to the individual level, if there is an organization, organization that is a social unit, that has a goal to be achieved, and that goal will be achieved by the human resource it absorbs in the organization, right? So when the human resource is there, there are four major things a person or an HR manager or the organization seeks in the person who will be absorbed for a particular job and role. First, the ability. Is that person capable enough to be at that particular position? Second, the biographic characteristics, maybe the gender, the age group, and other things. Third, his personality and attitude. When I talk personality or when I say personality, it means like if uh, you have to select a person for being a bouncer, I hope you have heard about the bouncers, right? So then I will be requiring a person with biographical characteristics that should be, he should have a heavy build. And then opposite to it, if I am finding somebody for a flight steward or stewardess, then we want particular physical uh, checks, right? This and then the height should be this, should look beautiful, smiling face. But then if somebody has to be taken for accounts, you need not require a smiling face altogether. Now comes the fourth thing, that is emotions. It is very, very important when you are in an organization, you should be emotionally intelligent. People talk about IQ, but then nowadays, more we talk about is EQ, emotional question. Are you emotionally balanced? Do you know about yourself? And when I say emotional intelligence, it is ability to understand your own emotions as well as respect the other person's emotions as well. So then, once you are there at the individual level, you have checked all the four things, you are absorbed in the organization, these four characteristics will lead to the kind of perception, motivational level, locus of control, all these things, and then you go to the group level, where there will be teams. If teams are there, there will be individual differences. If differences are there, conflicts will arise. Conflicts arises, negotiation takes place. And for negotiation, there has to be somebody who will be the disturbance handler. So a manager's role again comes in. How will you disseminate these things? And how will you handle this disturbance? Conflict management. And then, after coming to the group level, we go to the structure level, the policies of the organization, terms and conditions, your leaves and all, promotion, appraisals, everything, plus the kind of structure you are working in, the kind of culture the organization gives you. Is it a mechanistic model where it is very tough, the rules and regulations are strict, or it is an, an organic um, structure where people have the liberty? to do what they want. There is rigor, there is creativity, and no system can be totally organic or totally mechanistic. But yes, bureaucracy, or when we talk about government organizations, they are 99% mechanistic. Nowadays, if we talk about our college, we are a mixed system. We are mechanistic because it is necessary. Otherwise, we'll end up in a mess. But then, the chairman has given the liberty to be organic. So it's like that. 
If you are a member or you are a part of a software building company or an organization, you will have to be organic. You are going to a client, client says, please change these colors. It's not that you will call your boss and ask, the client is asking me to change the color. Do you think so? The client will think, what a fool I'm talking to. He's even asking for changing a color. No, so that entrepreneurship has to be developed within you so that you may take that decisions which you are in the you know, uh, capability of and that authority has been provided to you. So these three things, individual, group and structure, combined together, completes an organization. And a human being, human resource, will come up with productivity, less absenteeism, less turnover, and a feeling of citizenship, belongingness, with the organization, to the organization. And that comes up with the perfect idea of an organization being successful. So how to make organizations successful is here. And that is why we are studying this subject. You should know who to hire, when to catch them, what to allocate, and then how to expand it. After studying it, you will be able to know the nitty gritties of individual behavior, the perception forming, perceptual errors, how to motivate a person, how to check either the locus is inside or outside, how one behaves in teams, how to handle the conflicts, and finally, how to work on the structure according to the kind of work you are providing to the other person. I hope this is clear to all of you. Tomorrow, we'll continue with perception building.